Yo, what is up everyone? It's Josh again. I hope you are doing well and thanks for checking out this video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a cable using one of these Waipu SA12 connectors. This cable that you see right here is my first try using one of these connectors that I did on stream earlier today. If you want to catch a stream in the future, I'll have a link in the description below. But overall, I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, it works, of course, which is a good sign. But I want to have shorter heat shrink ends for this video here. I'll be using this really cool multicolored coil as well as this long end here to install this SA12 connector on in this video here. Before hopping into the build, let's show off the cool features about this connector here. First of all, you're going to notice that it's, it's pretty chonky. Like it has a larger footprint than other connectors as you may see here. You may or may not like that, but at the end, you know, it's all preference. Uh, so as I pull this apart, you're going to notice that there is a rubber cap here. I believe you can just pull this off if you don't want it. So this is a nice way just to cover it up when you're not using it. But at the end of the day, you can just also remove this whole thing as well if you would like. Next off, it's a push-pull connector. So similar to a YC8, you can just pull it in place like that and then just pull it apart to snap it out of place. So, and then I can put it back together as so. And I'll have a tight fit connection there. So that's a pretty cool part of this connector here. Next of all, as you notice, it's blue. I believe this is anodized aluminum, which is, makes them like pretty unique from other connectors that I've worked with in the past. So it's just for me, you know, it's nice to try out new things and I'm really glad I get my hands on a few of these here. To compare it with a few other common connectors, let me move this off here. We have the SA12 here. Here is the Aviator GX16. And then here we have a YC8. So you're going to notice that it's about the same width, I think, of the GX GX16 Aviator, but a little longer. And you can tell it's quite larger than the YC8 here, maybe like 2x the size. So if this you want like a prominent piece on your desk as a part of your cable setup, I think this is a really good choice. Um, if you're not into things with a large footprint, maybe this may not be for you. Anyways, I'll try to have a few of these stocked in the store if you want to try them out yourself. But with that being said, let's go hop into making a cable using one of these Waipu SA12 connectors. So I'm going to start by disassembling this connector here. Being a push-pull, I can just pull it apart like that. And then from here, I'm going to break down this connector. So I can unscrew the butt end by just twisting it off like that. I have this part here that I believe is meant to secure the cable in the connector. And then this part right here, I believe I can just screw this part off. I think this is one of like the easiest disassembly processes I've seen with other connectors, so I find that I found that pretty convenient. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the male end here. So I just twist off the butt end, that comes off, and I have the same piece I have on the other end, and I could twist off this part right here. I believe these three components here are the same on both sides, so it's kind of nice having them be equal because I know if you use heat shrink it's nice to have like both ends being even sizing because I know for like the GX16 aviator one size is like like a fragment of an inch larger which makes it a little rough from time to time but anyways we have this disassembled here for this um, build here I noticed that when I tried out this connector the first time there is quite a bit of clearance between this part of the connector here and the cable so I'm going to use a little heat shrink on my cable to kind of close up the gap with that being said, I'm actually going to remove this black part here. I believe this is meant for securing the cable, but having using heat shrink for this build here, I'm actually going to remove this. I believe I could just pull this, pull this out using like a pair of pliers that I did here. So I'm going to take it off on both sides. And I'm going to grab this other side here and just pull out this little black insulator there. All right, so now that we have our connector fully disassembled, we're going to go into putting this onto a cable. Alright, so we have our cable here. I'm going to push this off to the side. And today we'll be using this cable that I had pre-made here. If you haven't seen one of my earlier videos, like how to make a regular DIY uh, double sleeve cable, make sure to check out this video. I'll have a card up here somewhere, I think. So make sure to check that out if you haven't seen one of my videos before. Here I have a coil made from neon pink and light blue in neon blue tech flex. And then this is a neon blue tech flex with light blue paracord. So I think it's a really nice like multicolor setup here. The first step I'm going to do is actually add heat shrink to the ends. So I'm going to start doing that first. 
this is to kind of secure the end right here and to also have a place for the connector to slide over. So I'm just going to go to the part where I have my paracord end and I'm gonna grab my heat gun here. So you're gonna hear some blowing here, but I'm just gonna heat shrink this down. Now that that side is done, I'm going to do it to the other side as well. All right, so now that we have the heat shrink on here, we can go into adding the connectors onto our cable. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add the housings onto the cables here. So I'm gonna start with the butt end here. And I'm gonna do this to both sides. So I have that end, I'm gonna put the white part into it next. And then I'm gonna add this larger part of the housing here. That's just, just slide on easily like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this side here. So we'll start with this part. Should slide in place there. Have the white part. Gonna slide that on here. And then the larger part of the housing there. So that should be all in place now. Now that we have that here, I'm actually gonna have a small piece of heat shrink that I use as insulation for the parts that I will be soldering. So this is a preventative measure, measure that I do, but it's up to you if you want to do this yourself. There. All right, now that we have the here, I'm gonna go into stripping these ends so it allows us to solder the connectors onto it. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and strip these cables. If you haven't again checked out one of the DIY USB cable videos, make sure to check that out if you haven't already. This is pretty standard stuff, so I'll go ahead and fast forward through it. But the goal is to leave about a half inch of exposed wire on each end. So I'm going to go work on that now. All right, so now that I have my wire shipped, I'm gonna go into soldering the connectors. Before that, I'm just gonna actually expose a little part of these wires to allow me to tin this cable. But I'm also gonna fast forward through this. The diagram for an SA12 connector is slightly different from a GX16 aviator or a YC8. So I'll have that image on screen right now. So yeah, hope you enjoy this soldering montage and I will see you once this is all soldered. All right, now here I have finished desoldering. I put a little electrical tape in between the contacts just to be a little protective of my soldering connections there. But now I'm gonna go ahead and put down this heat shrink that I added before, just to make sure that we have our contacts covered. With the housing being aluminum, I think this is a nice way to prevent shorts just in case. But if your solder points are good, you shouldn't have too much of a problem here.
I did the other side. And then from there, I'm just gonna put the housing back on. So here we have our coil end. And we'll just slide this part up, twist it back into place, just like that. Very simple. And there we go, get it nice and snug. That should be good. Then the white end should slide up here. There's a sweet spot where this fits in properly all the way in. So find that so it's flush with the threads here. So again, it could stop here, but if you twist a little, it should fall in right in place. And then I'm gonna twist the butt end here, and this should be a finished end. This looks actually look really cool. There we go. That's that there. And then our long end, slide this up, twist into place. There we go. Get our white part here. Find the spot, fits in right there. And then grab our button. There we go. And get it all the way up there. Just twist this all the way in. I don't know if it fits all the way, but I think that's as tight as it goes. So I think I'm okay with that for now. All right, so there we have it. We have our finished cable. From now, I guess we'll just test it and see if it works. All right, so I have my long GAN plugged into my computer. So I will just plug in this coil here. You'll see there's a red dot on the connector itself to find the spot where they come together. I will just snap it in like that, plug that in and find my USB-C port here. This is actually a 2468 with a custom wooden board and I have GMK Cafe on it, which is really nice. So let's go here and repeat the test and this should work. All right, I'm not gonna baffle you with my slow typing speed, but we have working cable here and we have completed the cable. All right, so here we have our finished cable. I do think the blue anodized finish does fit in really well with the whole blue color scheme here. And overall, it's a pretty exciting cable to look at, right? But anyways, I hope you all learned more about the Waipu SC12 connectors and maybe even have appreciation for it yourself. If you want to get your hands on one, I'll try to have a few available in the store. So make sure to check out the link in the description if you want to get your hands on one there. Anyways, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more cable content like this in the future, I'm trying to do a weekly upload, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you in a future video. Anyways, that's all for me today. And make wise choices. Keep okay, bye.